This episode is brought to you by World of Warships. The game is free to play with the perfect balance of action and strategy. You can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels. In this team-based game, you can unlock new ships and dominate the ocean with 30 million players worldwide. Experience combat in weather effects that make each engagement unique and challenge the tactics of battle. In World of Warships, each in-game ship is faithfully recreated using 3D scans of the real-life version. You can customize it to your design. World of Warships is constantly updating the game, so there's something new to experience with a steady cadence of new missions, game updates, and events. There are over 200 ships available to play across 11 different nations, and submarines will be coming soon. Use our exclusive code below and get two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden. Click the link below to play World of Warships and collect an exclusive bonus starter pack. New players can register with the code BOOM to receive 200 doubloons, 2.5 million credits, the two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden, seven days of premium time, and more. The U-Boat Sunk by a Toilet Flush Strange Stories of World War II On the morning of April 14, 1945, U-1206, one of the last German U-boats to be commissioned, was cruising at a depth of 200 feet, just off the coast of Scotland, about 8 to 10 miles from Peterhead in Aberdeenshire. The submarine was on its first combat patrol and had launched just eight days prior to this from the Nazi-occupied Port Christiansen in Norway, under the command of 27-year-old Captain Lieutenant Carl Adolf Schlitt. The crew's mission was to seek out and destroy American and British convoys in the North Atlantic. They had been experiencing a few difficulties, such as the U-boat's diesel engines not operating correctly, forcing it to run on battery power, so the crew were busy making repairs. What happened next can arguably be considered one of the strangest demises for a vessel in naval history. To fully appreciate the story, a little information on the complexity of submarine toilets is necessary. High external pressure when the vessel is submerged means that waste can't just be dumped into the sea. British submarines of the time got around this problem by having septic tanks on board, but these came with their own set of problems, taking up precious space and adding weight. The Germans opted for a different method, one that could expel waste directly. Unfortunately, this only worked while they were either close to or at the surface. This meant that during a deep dive, the crew of a U-boat had no working toilet and were forced to relieve themselves in open buckets. Despite the obvious unpleasantness, World War II submarines were not known for their delightful aromas, even at the best of times. However, this wasn't too much of a problem during the early stages of the war. The Allies' ability to spot and hunt down U-boats was not particularly effective at this time, meaning that the vessels could surface regularly. As the war progressed, this began to change, and the U-boats were forced to spend increasing amounts of time submerged in order to avoid detection. The toilet situation had to change. To solve the problem, the Germans developed a new high-pressure toilet system, which could be used at depth. Unfortunately, the system was extremely complicated to use and required specialist training. First, the toilet directed human waste through a series of chambers to a pressurized airlock. Then the deep water high pressure toilet blasted the human waste into the sea with compressed air, like a poop torpedo. A specialist on each U-boat received training on proper toilet operating procedures. There was an exact order for opening and closing a series of valves to ensure that the flush operated correctly. This officially trained in how to flush the toilet specialist was called a WC Waste Disposal Unit Manager, who was also known among the crew as the man. Back to the morning of April 14th and the ill-fated U-1206, it should be noted that there are actually two versions of the events that unfolded that day. The first of these comes in the form of Captain Schlitt's official report. He claims that he was in the engine room when he was told that there was a leak coming from the front of the boat, and that he later learned a mechanic had attempted to fix the outboard vent of the forward toilet, which had ultimately failed. The second, and by far the most popular version of events, goes as follows. A submariner, according to most accounts Captain Schlitt himself, had to answer a call of nature, and when he was done with his business, attempted to use the complicated flushing mechanism by himself. 
When he was unable to make the flush work, he called in the specialist who unfortunately misjudged the situation and failed to operate the valves in the correct order. Whichever version of the story is true, the end results were the same. A failure in the toilet system resulted in sewage and seawater flooding into the vessel in such large quantities that it came into contact with the submarine's batteries, which were located just below the toilet, causing a chemical reaction which released deadly chlorine gas into the air. And to make the situation worse, the U-boat's bilge pumps malfunctioned. Despite their proximity to the coast and the likelihood of being spotted, the situation had become dire enough that Captain Schlitt was forced to order the U-boat to surface in the hope that they could successfully vent the gas. Unfortunately for the captain and his men, this was not to be. They very soon came under attack by the RAF, who were able to do enough damage that the U-boat was utterly disabled. Unable to either dive or maneuver and realizing that the situation had become hopeless, Captain Schlitt threw his codebooks overboard and ordered U-1206 to be scuppered. Out of the U-boat's crew of 50 men, four didn't survive the incident. One man lost his life during the RAF attack and the other three as they attempted to make their way to the Scottish coast. The remaining 46 crew members were captured and held as POWs for the rest of the war. This didn't prove to be very long, as just 16 days later, Adolf Hitler committed suicide in his bunker in Berlin, and eight days after that, the Nazis surrendered, bringing an end to the war in Europe. As for Captain Schlitt, he survived the war and passed away in 2009 at the age of 90. U-1206, however, still rests at the bottom of the North Sea. This episode was brought to you by World of Warships. Use our exclusive code below and get two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden. Click the link to play World of Warships and collect an exclusive bonus starter pack. New players can register with the code BOOM to receive 200 doubloons, 2.5 million credits, the two free ships, the St. Louis and the premium ship Emden, seven days of premium time, and more.